going to unpack our U26, our DO logger here, and we're going to prepare it for deployment tomorrow. So what we want to do is we want to open the package, install the sensor cap, and do a lab calibration. So we're going to document that for you. Uh, these steps were also covered in the, uh, the U26 training course in more detail, so I won't go into a whole lot of detail, but we're going to open up the package. It comes strapped. Uh, here's our, this is our U26, and we're going to cut the straps with our knife to open up the package. And this is how the logger is packaged from the factory. This is the quick start guide. Actually, this is the full manual, I believe. And this will explain all the steps that we're going to be following. Put this aside for now. Here's our logger, our data logger. Move the packaging out of the way. This is our calibration boot. And here's our data logger. Inside the calibration boot is the sponge to calibrate the device at 100% water saturated air. The other thing you'll see in here is a small film canister. This is the sensor cap. This is kept in here to protect it from light during storage. This has a, a six month life once it's activated. Um, we give you an extra month, so seven months, but it, it will let you know in the software if the cap is expired. You can see here it says installed by 10-31-2017, right on the, uh, the housing. This is a brand new logger right out of stock. So the first thing we want to do is we want to install the sensor cap. So we're going to take the guard off. This is the... We're not going to use this guard, actually. We're going to put a, uh, an anti-fouling guard on here, which is an option. It has, a cop, has copper windings around it, which protects uh, and helps keep down uh, fouling for the logger. So we're going to use that instead of this cap. And this is, this is the protective red cap that covers the actual sensor. There's the sensor itself. There's the optics here and the electrical contacts here for the cap. So we want to install that cap. That seven months, or actually six months plus a month um, countdown starts right after you uh, launch it or initialize it when you calibrate it. So here's the cap. And we want to make sure we're installing it the right way here arrow and a flat spot inside that lines up with these contacts right here. I should just pop that on there and it just pops on like that. So now our sensor cap is on and we can proceed to run through a calibration. So we're going to run through the, cal the lab calibration on this. The first thing we need to do is to create a saturated environment for the logger, for the, for the sensor. So move that cap out of the way. So we're gonna, we have our sponge and we have some water. This, we usually just use tap water. This is actually bottled water. You wanna make sure that it's not dripping wet, that it's, it's saturated but not dripping. So we're gonna put that in the bottom of our cap, in our uh, calibration boot, I should say. And then we're gonna install the boot onto the logger. And we're going to slide that down about a half an inch or so. You can see there's a vent in the end. And we're going to let that acclimate to that saturated environment for 15 minutes. And then we're going to do the lab calibration. The lab calibration routine is accessed with our Hoboware software. You can do it with the free version of Hoboware or Hoboware Pro. In order to communicate with this device, it uses um, 
low power LED, um, uh, infrared LED communications, just like a lot of our, uh, actually most of our current water loggers communicate that way. So in order to get to the communications window or to access it with our base station or shuttle, we unscrew the protective cap. That comes off, we can see the infrared LEDs are inside of there. This is all waterproof. So you can use this, you can offload data using the waterproof shuttle to uh, underwater if you need to. And this, you don't have to worry about removing this cap and it leaking, this is, this is still waterproof. We're going to use the free version of Hoboware, so we're gonna use the, the optic base station. In order to use the waterproof shuttle, you do need Hoboware Pro. You also will need Hoboware Pro to post-process your data if you need to um, correct for salinity or um, uh, access other functions of the dissolved oxygen data assistant. There is actually a data assistance course that talks about all the different data assistants. It's also included in the U26 course as well. So you can see here there's a, an arrow with a groove and it says align. So we wanna align that with our alignment on our coupler. This is the optic base station. It's connected to our computer via USB and we're using our blue coated coupler. When you buy a base station or a shuttle, you get a series of five different couplers and they, they're designed to meet, uh, fit the form factors of the different types of loggers that are compatible with the shuttle or base station. So there's an align arrow on the coupler and a line arrow on the logger. We just wanna slide those together like that. And then you'll see the green LED comes on, the status LED green, meaning the, the, the base station has seen the logger and has woken it up. Uh, the way it does that, there's a, a little magnet inside of this rib here, so the logger is awake now. You never wanna store your logger with a coupler on it because the, the coupler will keep the logger awake and it'll cause that battery to die prematurely. So let's go into Hoboware and we'll run through our calibration. Now that we have established that saturated environment inside the boot for 15 minutes, we are going to use Hoboware Pro to run through the calibration of the U26. The lab calibration menu is available with the free version of Hoboware. However, I'm going to use Hoboware Pro. The interface is the same, so if you're using the free version, it will look exactly the same as with the Hoboware Pro uh, version of the software. The thing to keep in mind is that all of the post-processing power of the um, dissolved oxygen data assistant is in Hoboware Pro. It, it, that's not available with the free version of Hoboware. So trying to stay consistent using Hoboware Pro throughout, even though the lab calibration can be done with the free version of Hoboware. So if you have a, for example, we have customers who have the, the Hoboware Pro on a laptop, perhaps that they take into the field, but they want to do a lab calibration at their office and they don't want to purchase, they don't want to purchase a, another license for Hoboware Pro, they can download the free version and use that to do their lab calibration in the office. So that's a, a nice feature to take care, uh, take advantage of. So let's do our calibration of our U26. To do that, we're gonna, going to click on the device menu and access lab calibration. We get a, a warning message that says, the DO cap is uninitialized, which is correct. We just put it in. So opening the lab calibration and running through this will initialize the, the sensor cap and basically start the clock ticking. And it will expire. We give you, it's, it's, it's a six month operation window and we give you a, an extra month grace period. So we wanna initialize this cap by clicking on yes and we will get into the lab calibration menu. Here is our lab calibration window open. There's basically three steps, 100% saturation, 0% saturation, and then to finish. The first thing we need to do is put in our barometric pressure. So I have a calibrated barometric pressure device meter, and here's my 
current barometric pressure in millimeters of mercury. If we were using a a barometric pressure value from a website or a weather station that may be corrected to sea level. So if that's if we were using that, we'd have to put in an elevation, uh, our current elevation to correct that. However, this is an absolute measurement right here at uh, where I'm doing the calibration, so I don't have to do that. So our logger uh, sensor has been has been in a 100% saturated environment for approximately 17 minutes. So we're going to click on get DO value from logger and we'll get that reported here. We want to make sure that this is a stable reading prior to going to the next step. The way you confirm that it's stable is you click on get DO value from logger a few times, query that sensor two or three times to make sure that this value doesn't change from point to point. We did it once, we'll do it one more time. And it should be pretty stable at this point. And it is. So there's our new gain adjustment. We'll click on next to go to the next step. We're not going, we're going to skip this step. We're not going to use the sodium sulfite solution to um, present a 0% saturation environment to the logger because it's a new logger. But if, if you are recalibrating a logger that's been in the field for a while, it's a good idea to follow this step. However, be very careful about cleaning that sensor after exposing it to that sodium sulfite solution. Clean it with deionized water very well before you deploy the, the logger. So I'm going to skip this step and leave the zero value alone. So our here is our final configuration and we want to send the calibration to the logger by clicking on that blue checkbox and it has been sent and now we are ready to deploy the logger. We're going to launch it, configure it in Hobelware, launch it for a delayed start and we'll take it out in the field and deploy it. So let's click on the first icon, which is launch device, and we can configure the logger for our deployment. So here we are in the launch window, and we're going to call this pond dissolved oxygen. That'll be our data file name when we read out the data. We're going to be monitoring the dissolved oxygen and temperature. We're not going to use any filters. We are going to select a 15 minute logging interval notice. Hoboware calculates how long it will take the logger to fill up at that logging interval, 226 days. Also notice that we see we get a, a date of when the sensor cap is going to expire, which is March 30th of next year, 2017. So what's going to happen is when we tell it to launch, we're going to get a warning that it's going to say your sensor cap is going to expire before the logger is going to stop logging. We don't really care because we're going to manually stop the logger. It's just a reminder to let you know that your dissolved oxygen uh, sensor cap is going to expire during the deployment if you don't stop it before it expires. And then all your data afterwards will be, um, it, will, it will not be valid DO data after it expires. So that's what it's going to tell us. And we have the logger configured to start automatically tomorrow, the 30th of August at noon and uh, it, that will it will coincide with the start time of the conductivity logger as well and we'll be able to uh, combine those two data files together. Click the delayed start and we'll see that error or that warning message come up and basically what it's going to what it's telling us is that if we do not remove the logger stop the logger just let it keep logging, the dissolved oxygen sensor cap will expire before the logger stops logging. That's all it's telling us. And we're going to stop it way before then. So let's launch. Now that we have the logger configured in Hoboware, we're going to install the optional U26 Guard-2 anti-fouling guard. This is the way it comes from the factory. You can see his, here's the original guard that came with the logger. It's very similar, a little bit smaller hole in the top, but it has the 
copper wire on there which mitigates biofouling. So to put that on, we remove our calibration boot which we still had on from our calibration. It's a good idea to store it with the boot on it and it uh, prevents the cap from being exposed to excessive light levels and we have it now we have it ready to go when we deploy it obviously it will not have the boot on here but when we get ready to mount it we'll take the boot off and deploy it in the water